Welcome back to Library Chess YouTube channel. In today's class, we are going to learn how to make this beautiful pleated palazzo jumpsuit. It's a kimono jumpsuit. It's really free as we have seen. It has pleats on the waistline to control the waistline and the bust area is also free as well. You can see how beautiful this jumpsuit looks. It has a zipper at the back i'm just going to turn to the back so that we can see what it looks like so this is the back you can see that the waistline of the back is fitted as well it's only free on the bum area the leg area and the waist area if this is something you like to learn kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial thank you So you can actually draft this directly on your fabric because but i'm using a white colored fabric so i don't want too much markings on it that's why i'm doing this on the paper so that we can see the markings very well and understand what i'm doing so i'm working with this crepe fabric and i'm going to be drafting my pattern before transferring to the fabric so what i have done here before taking any measurements on this side that is the center fold area for my crotch cuff, I came in by two and a half inches and then I made this into a straight line, which is the straight line that we are seeing here. Then after that, I took my vertical measurement. So here, it's a kimono jumpsuit, so it means we are cutting the sleeve together with the with the bodies. My actual arm hole is nine inches, so I added extra two inches to that so that it can be as free as possible. So I marked my arm hole on 11 inches, which is the line that we see here. Then my waistline is 17 and a half, which is what we have here. And then my hip line is 26 inches. So those are the lines that I have marked for now. So after that, when I'm taking my uh, horizontal measurement, I'm going to be taking it from this line, not this outer line, from this center line that I redo. So from here, I'm going to mark my shoulder measurement. The shoulder is 15 inches, where by two is seven and a half. So I'll mark seven and a half inches here. But remember I said we are cutting the sleeve together with the bodies. So from there, I'm going to mark my sleeve. My sleeve is actually around 10 inches, so I'm adding one inch extra to it. So I'll leave that at 11 inches. Okay, so now I'm cutting the sleeve together with the main body. And on that point for my shoulder slope, I'm going to come down by one and a half inches. Okay, I hope we are able to see what I have done there. Okay, those are the markings that I have there. So now, after that, I'm going to come to this side now. And then I'm going to mark my neckline. The neck width is going to be three inches. Depending on what you want, you can increase if you want, but I'm working with 3 inches neck width. So for the neck depth of the back, it's high. So I'm going to leave it as 1 inch for my back neck depth. But for the front, I'm going to leave it as 7 inches because it's, it's deeper, it's like a V neckline. And then I'm going to take my curve and connect that. So you can see that I'm cutting the front and back together on this pattern. And then I'm going to separate them when I'm cutting on my fabric. So now this is for my front neckline. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to take a straight ruler and then connect from here all the way to the shoulder slant that I created to the one, one and a half inches that I marked here. So this is for my shoulder slant. I'm sure we are familiar with all of this, okay? So after doing all of this now, the next thing I'm going to do is to start taking my vertical my horizontal measurement so on this point here on my hand hold line this is the arm hold line sorry my marker so this is my hand hold line this is the waistline and this is the hip line so on the hand hold line i'm taking my bust measurement the bust is 44 divided by 4 is 11 inches so i'm going to mark 11 inches which is my actual measurement on my waistline the waist is 34 that's what divided by four is eight and a half so here i'm going to mark the eight and a half inches which is my actual waist and then on the hip line which is air i'm going to mark my hip measurement divided by four hip is 44 as well so divided by four is 11. so i have 11 inches there and then i'm going to go ahead and join all of these markings together so it's not the actual line so I'll just use this faint blue marker to connect all of them together. 
okay because we are still going to add allowance for creating the plate so these are my actual measurements so the next measurements i need to take now is my crotch length okay so for my crotch length i'm going to start taking the measurement from my waistline this is my waistline so my actual crotch length is 11 inches but i want the crotch to be as free as possible this is a jumpsuit so i'm adding excess to it and it's a very free jumpsuit so i'm adding extra three inches to the 11 inches and that's going to leave me with 14 inches so i'm going to mark my crotch depth at 14 inches here and then i'll make that into a straight line as well so when i'm marking this straight line i'm going to mark the line into this excess allowance that I created here. I hope you can see it. So this excess allowance that I have here, this crotch line is going to enter into it. Remember all the measurements I was taking was from here. But for the crotch, it's going to be from here. So now on the crotch line, this is the crotch line. On this crotch line, that's where I'm going to take my tie measurement. So you measure the fullest part of your tie. You measure that loosely. And for me, that's 30 inches. So 30 divided by four by two sorry remember your ties are separate it's two now so we are dividing by two so 30 divided by two is going to give me 15 inches so i'm going to take the 15 inches measurement from inside this allowance so you can see and then i'm going to mark my 15 inches here so i have the 15 inches there and then i'm going to continue connecting okay from here remember i said i'm still adding excess so i'm just using this temporary mark so now this one we are going to take it all the way to the hem remember it's a palazzo so on this other side here we are going to create our crotch curve remember we have this extending here and all other measurement stops here so to create the crotch curve i'll simply just take my curve driller and then connect from this center line just like this okay so I'm taking this ruler I'm just trying to find a really nice ruler that will give me a good curve there and then I'm just going to blend everything together okay sorry I don't I couldn't find my pants curve so I'm just making do with this so this is what my crotch curve looks like now and then the next thing I is to blend this together with this sensor line that I have here as well so I'm taking my my cuff and then i'm blending like this okay you can see now that we have our crotch settled so like i said this center line that's what i'm going to take all the way to my hem it's a full length so the hem is going to be 60 inches so i'll just go ahead and mark whatever i marked here okay i'm going to take that same measurement all the way to the hem to form my straight pant so we can see now that i have taken the marking up the way to my full length which is 60 inches so i just connected my crotch like this all the way straight down and then i did the same thing on the other side so now we start adding our our allowance to create the pleats that we see there so now to add this allowance depending on the amount of pleats that you want to form so for me i want to add three pleats on each side of the front and three piece on three pleats on each side of the fry back so which means one side is going to have three pleats the other side is going to have three that's six in front and six at the back so to create these three pleats and remember we are just working with half of the half of the front and half of the back now so we are working with the half so which means we are just working on three pleats so to add that, to add my measurement for the three pleats, I want each of the pleats to be around two inches, okay? And then I'm going to have three pleats. Three pleats. That means I need six inches extra to, to create this pleat. So two, we are working with two inches pleats, but we are going to be taking one inch by the time we sew. I don't want us to get confused. Remember, pleats are two ways. So which means if I am taking one inch pleat, okay? So this is a pleat. So which means if I am taking one inch pleat, it means I am taking one inch here and then the other one that is under is going to be one inch as well, which is what makes the two inches. You can see now, but once you open it up, everything is going to be two inches, which is what makes the two inches pleat that I said I'm working with. And I will need three of that, 
okay because i said i want to make three plates so i'm multiplying two by three and that is giving me the six inches plate that i am creating then after that i'm going to add one inch allowance to sew the side seam remember all the measurements we took here are our actual measurement so which means i am adding extra seven inches to this so what i'm going to do now is to come to my waistline and then on my waistline from where my actual waist measurement stops i'll come here and add extra seven inches that's six inches for my pleats and one inch to sew my side seam this fabric is not stretchy so i really need to add a side seam to it so you can see now that i have added to this so here i'm going to come to the bust line as well and then i'm going to add this allowance to the bust as well so on my bust you can add the x exact because we are taking this pleat from the waistline although it's still going to extend upward and that one but it's just a little bit so you can take the exact seven inches that you took here or here you can just deduct one inch from it and take six inches if you don't want it so wide so which is what i'm doing so here i'm taking six inches in six inches as again seven inches that i took here and then i'm connecting just like this okay so now these are the excess that we are adding so here i'm going to come to the hip line as well i'm going to add extra I think six inches is fine for me for the hip as well if you don't want your palazzo to be so big you can start reducing this as you're going downwards you can reduce this to five and then on your crotch you can take four inches that's if you don't want the hem of the of the trouser to be so wide okay so this is okay for me so here on the crotch area as well i'm going to take the same six inches xx allowance that i am taking from the others like i said if you don't want it so wide you can just reduce this to around five inches so that it's not going to be really wide but if you don't mind for me i want it a little bit big so i'll just take five and a half inches and then i'm going to connect just like this so now just like we did for the first one i'm just going to take this all the way to the hem as well so you can see now that i have taken the measurement all the way to the hem so now the last thing to do now is to work on the the sleeve okay the sleeve area the kimono area so now i'm just going to connect like this and then i'm going to make sure that i have exact same thing that i have here so yeah all together i have 18 and a half inches so on the on the bust line i'm going to check that i have the 18 and a half which is here so i'll just connect like this okay so this is my sleeve opening area and what i'm going to do now is just to create like a curve here so that i don't have it too wide so you can make your sleeve longer than this but i really want to it to stop on my elbow area so i'm just working if your sleeve is longer you just extend like this so now this is what i'm doing and now i'm going to go ahead and cut out this pattern so that i can cut it out on my fabric so I've gone ahead to cut them on my fabric and you will see that I added half an inch allowance at the center front. So for the front, I'm going to join it together. That's why I added half an inch. And for the back as well, I'm going to put a zipper. So I'm just going to manage to put my zipper at this allowance, this small allowance that I have here. So that's why I have the half an inch allowance that I have for the back as well okay so it just goes all the way like that i had the allowance on this side i did not have any allowance because remember i had one inch allowance for joining when i was taking allowance for my pleats okay and here on the sleeve i had half an inch as well so that i can turn it in i had one inch so that i can turn it in and then i had half an inch on the shoulder area for joining so basically this is what i did so for the neckline you can see that i just cut out the back neckline so i'm going to detach this now and then i will just i'll remove the back and then work on the the two for the front so that i can cut out my you can see i'm tucking it in so now i'm going to rearrange it and cut out my front neckline so i did not change anything on my crotch this is a very big jumpsuit so the crotch is not going to be so, so the, the crotch is not going to be tight and i'm working for a regular normal size so if you feel that the person's bum is really big on the crotch area on the crotch extension you can increase it 
so i've cut the neckline for the front so what i was saying on this crotch area let me just shift to that here you can extend this here by two and a half you can watch my tutorial on jumpsuits to understand that so if the person's bum is really big you can just extend this by two inches or two and a half inches and then reconnect this back but this is a, a free jumpsuit you can see the amount of allowance that we had it so it shouldn't have any issues so now the next thing now is to work on how to actually create those pleats so on the waistline remember we added all of this extra allowance this six inches allowance this this one inch for is for sewing so we had this extra six inches allowance so that's what we're going to be using to take our pleats now so the first thing i'm going to do is to measure out the space that is going to be in between the pleats okay for your center area there's no split at the center front of course so there is a space in between so i'm going to be leaving around four inches space so if you are sharing four inches in between the two before you have your pleats you have two on one side and two on the other side so that two inches is what i'm going to be marking here so i'm marking two inches here because there's no allowance but when you get to your fabric remember we had that half an inch allowance to sew this back so it means you're marking two and a half inches on your fabric so which means our pleats whatever pleats we are taking is going to start from here it's not going to to start from this center so i added two inches for each pleat which is going to be one inch each on on each side of the pleat so now i'm going to mark the one inch like this so after marking my one inch i'm going to take the pleat okay. so let me just make it into a straight line so that we would see what i'm doing so now i'm marking it we are going to be extending it you are going to take it like a that so from my waistline, I'm going to mark three inches upwards. Okay, so now I'm creating like a dart leg. I'm marking three inches upwards from the waistline, and then from the waistline, I'm going to mark around three to two to three inches downwards as well. So I think I want everything to be around five inches or five and a half inches long. So you can see I mark three inches upwards, and then I'm marking two and a half inches downwards, so that everything here, the entire length of this plate is going to be five inches. Five and a half inches sorry so this long length now the next thing i'm going to do is to pleat so now after marking it you start taking your pleats and then you decide the direction you want the pleat to face for me i want the plate feet to face the center front remember this is where our crotch line is so this is our center front that's where my my feet are facing so here where you have that one inch after marking the two inches where you have that one inch that's where i'm going to take the plates like this so i have one inch here one inch here which is the two inches that we left and then i'm placing it towards the center front so now i'm just going to hold this with my pin so after holding that plate with my pin you can see how it's facing there again i'm going to mark another two inches so from here again i'm going to mark another two inches which is this and then i'm going to assume that i have my three inches upwards and two and a half inches downward so on that point again in, this is the space in between okay this is the two inches okay so from the two inches i'm going to mark the next split okay which is going to be one inch sorry this is not this is where i'm going to go up by three and two and a half inches okay the first one you mark is your distance which is two inches and then from there you mark one inch for the plate so on that one inch plate i'm going to take another plate sorry this is a paper so now after taking the plate i'm going to it's going to face my center front again like this and then i'm going to hold this down so if this two inches space is small for you by the time we fold this is going to be around one inch which is fine for me if it's too small for you you can increase the distance to like say if you want yours to be further you can increase your distance to three inches from here so if we do three inches now you see the distance that we're going to have so if you mark three inches like this this is the distance then you're going to mark one inch which is going to be your actual plate so on that one inch you're going to you're going to come on that one inch you're going to come up by three inches and down by two and a half inches and then after doing that you go ahead and take the pleats okay you go ahead and take your your one inch pleats so after taking the one inch pleats you are going to pleat it towards this side now i'm going to hold this with a pin so after pleating it you can see that the distance that we have here is wider because we came out by 
three inches. Here we came out by two inches, so we have one inch left. Here we came out by three inches, and we have two inches left. So you can see the distance. So you can see. So here, this is the distance that I have here. It's going to be around two inches because I came out by three inches. And when I came out by two inches, this is the distance that I have. So I want them to be really close together. So I'm just going to take a distance of two inches or maximum two and a half inches so that my place is going to be close together and all of this is going to be on your wrong side of the fabric so you are going to sew it straight down like this and it's going to face this side on the wrong side of your fabric so on the right side it's going to be clean so you can see what the right side is going to look like and the pleats are going to be facing your center front so now that all the six inches please have been taken now i'm just going to check my measurement so that you will see that we just took exactly what we what we need to take so here remember i started with eight and a half inches you can see that my eight and a half inches remains the same and the one inch allowance that i had it i hope you can see so we have nine and a half inches in total that's eight and a half inches for the actual measurements and one inch allowance for our for our seam so it is that simple that is what i'm going to be doing on my fabric so on the fabric now i'll just show us so you can see i don't want it to have so many markings that's why i decided to illustrate with the paper i have marked out my my waistline with this blue chalk so from there just like i did this is my center area i remember i have half an inch there so here I'm going to come in by two and a half inches because of the half an inch and the two half an inch is going to be here and then on that point I'm going to mark the one inch so after marking the one inch I'll come up by three inches and down by two and a half inches and then I'm going to go ahead and hold the dart then after holding my dart it's going to be facing the front so from here again I'm going to mark two and a half i said i'm going to be working with a distance of two and a half so after marking the two and a half which is going to be around here i'm going to mark out one inch for the next pleat and then i'm going to take the pleat again and then it's going to face this side then after that i'm going to go ahead and mark the next two and a half inches which is going to be around here i'll mark another one inch for the pleat and then i'll take the last pleat which is going to be facing here so you can see that is what i'm going to do and by the time you are done you are going to have nine and a half inches you can see what we have here this is nine and a half inches which is the exact measurement that i started with so i have gone ahead to create this plate you can see what i have then after creating my plate i joined the two front together so you can see with the half an inch that i left i joined it up to the crotch area so you can see it now i just saw it from the neckline to the crotch area so now my two front is together and you can see my three pleats i have six all together one two three four five and okay this is the center line this is not the pleat it's for the center line so i have one two three on this side and one two three on this side making six and like i said your pleats can face anywhere you want it's so free now so if you want it to to be on one to for it to just glue together and stay in one place you can put a, an aiming gum there and use it to just make it fit a particular place permanently but for now it's still free so this is what i have this is the front you can see that this bust area is still very full from where the place stop on the hem as well all the hip area is still very full the only place that is fitted is our waist area which is around here which we still have our actual waist measurements okay you can see we still have our actual waist measurements here so for the back as well i took my plate and then with the half an inch allowance that i have on the back you can see i just sew my zipper with the half an inch allowance i sew in my zipper so that i can wear it easily remember the waist is fitted and the neck is not so wide so you have to just put a zipper for you to be able to wear it easily so now what i'm going to do next is to go ahead and join the shoulder together i have cut out a facing for this so i'm going to use a facing to turn the neckline you can also use the bias i'm going to join the shoulder together and also i'm going to join the crotch of the front and back like this okay you match the crotch area together like this and then you join to the to the hem i'll do the same thing on the shoulder i'll join the shoulder at the front and back together and then i'm going to aim the sleeve 
and sew it on the side so i'll do all of this now and bring it back to show us because this video is already very long so i have gone ahead to join the shoulder together you can see the shoulder is joined and then i hem the sleeve area as well so after sewing the under crotch area i just sew it on the sides and that is all you need to do so this is what the jumpsuit looks like now so you can go ahead and fix a side pocket to yours if you want but i don't think i have enough fabric that i will do two pockets so i'm just leaving mine as it is so this is what it looks like now so you just hang on it and i'll take it to the mannequin now so that i can see what it looks like but you can see that the waist is fitted is the exact waist measurement and the volume that we have here is only on the bust area and then on the lower part so this is what the jumpsuit looks like on the mannequin you can see how beautiful it looks you can see how snatched the waist looks because we are working with our actual waistline and this is what the full view of the jumpsuit look like so if you want your hem to be wider you just need to increase the allowance that you're adding to it and if you want more pleats as well you just had to the allowance that you worked with it's a very simple tutorial and i hope you enjoyed making this beautiful jumpsuit with me if this is something you have learned from kindly like comment and share this video so that more people will get to see it and i will see you in the next one bye